Adams 14 School District has been struggling for years with poor performance. They plan to improve their schools, but the state says it needs more details. They normally make ski accessories for kids. Now a Denver company is doing what it can to help people in Ukraine. And 75 years ago, Jackie Robinson became the first black man to play Major League Baseball. This morning, his son reflects on his legacy. Nine News Mornings starts right now. And good morning, everyone. A live look at Coors Field. Every player on both the Rockies and the Cubs will be wearing number 42 tonight. It is Jackie Robinson Day. The player that broke the uh, Major League Baseball color barrier will be honored. First pitch is at 640. The Rocks are hoping to turn things around after the Cubs ended their four-game winning streak last night. Chicago won it 5-2. to two. And thanks for joining us this morning, Gary, Natasha, Ed, uh, Ed and Erica with you. The whole gang almost. Whole gang. We're missing Corey. Corey's She's still on vacation. She's hopefully enjoying herself. Yes. Yep. Sleeping in. Sleeping <laughs> in. That's what I'd be doing. But uh, yeah, good morning, everybody. And uh, great baseball weather. We're talking about the forecast. We have some pretty nice weather coming our way. You know, the first month was, of the month was kind of the first half, kind of yeah. cold, windy, yeah. blustery, a little rain, snow mix. <laughs> now we're going to get into some nice weather, and it could go through the end of the month. Yeah. Like that. Right. Yes. Let's take a look outside of what we've got going on right now. And you can see that we do have uh, high clouds over the area, just some high clouds. They kind of dissipate. I think we see more in the way of sunshine. But by tomorrow night, we could see a little shower over the area. So we're at 36 degrees right now. Now you can see those high clouds just drifting across Colorado. We have some snow to the north. Yeah, we'll see a little snow over the high country. Might even see a sprinkle over the eastern plains today, but mostly clear skies as the day progresses. There's a few sprinkles there, maybe some snow showers in the high country. Then the clouds increase on your Saturday and Saturday night. We could see some scattered showers over the eastern plains, but it doesn't look like it's a big deal. So 66 degrees today we're under partly sunny skies, a little breezy too with gusts to about 30, 35 miles an hour. Then tomorrow increasing clouds, but 65 degrees. So we stay on the mild side. Sunday, nice way to end the weekend. 68 degrees, mostly sunny conditions. And then on Monday, 67 degrees with sunny skies. And as we get into next week, we get into the 70s. Ed, thank you so much. Right now, we want to talk about your Friday morning drive, which is looking so far so good out here. I-25 and Lincoln Avenue driving through Lone Tree. Really no issues out there. The big picture showing us the same thing. Just looking at green on our map across the metro at this hour, nice and early. Southbound 225 drive between I-70 and I-25 will take you 10 minutes, so you have the green light there. Eight minutes for your drive both ways on I-70 right now uh, for your commute between I-25 and 225. If you're traveling along I-25 between downtown and the Denver Tech Center, just a 14 minute drive both ways along I-25 so far this morning. And then I-25 between E-470 and I-70, nine minutes for your southbound travel time and your northbound drive, 13 minutes. The Adams 14 School District has had years of poor performance and other problems, but it's working on an improvement plan now. Yeah, now the state wants to hear more about it. Nine News reporter Courtney Yoon joins us live from the newsroom this morning. And Courtney, the state wants a new plan of action from the district. Natasha Gary Adams 14 has been struggling with their accreditation rating since 2010 and was ordered to work with an outside manager to turn around student performance. The district serves about 6,000 kids in Commerce City. In January, Adams 14 fired the consulting firm it was ordered to work with. Now they want more local control to turn around the district. During an hours long meeting with the State Board of Education yesterday, Adams 14 proposed an improvement model with partial management. It's something they call a partnership rather than complete control. The state told the district to come back in a few weeks with more details. Uh, we will engage the community uh, after the presentation. Actually, I already connected with community members. We're meeting on Tuesday. We're doing this. And Annie's going to send you an email. Uh, we are up to the challenge. We will deliver. It is aggressive, but it is doable. The state board also wants Adams 14 to come back in May with more details about improvement at two specific schools that are struggling, Central Elementary and Adams City High School. Natasha? Plan of action, they say, by, um, by May and then by June, too. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully we'll hear, be hearing some more soon. Okay. All right, Courtney, thank you. A former Aurora police officer wants a criminal charge against her to be dismissed. She's accused of failing to intervene when another officer pistol whipped a man that they were serving a warrant on. 
Her attorneys are arguing this charge against her is unconstitutional. So last summer, two Aurora officers attempted to arrest a man for an active warrant. Body cam video shows Officer John Hobart pointing his gun at Kyle Vinson. Officer Francine Martinez is nearby. Aurora officer uh, say that Hobart pistol whipped Vinson more than a dozen times choked him. Martinez is now facing a criminal charge for failing to intervene. Her attorneys filed a motion that said the statute is unconstitutional because state law does not define what it means to intervene. Vincent's attorneys think Martinez should have known to do more to stop that beating. I don't think that her arguments asserted in that motion are appropriate or correct. Um, I think that, you know, just bringing it back to common sense, the duty to intervene is not vague. <laughs> According to her motion, Martinez claims she touched Hobart's arm and told him to move his hand from Vincent's neck. Police didn't report uh, she, she made those efforts to stop the use of force when they filed documents for her arrest. She reached out to Martinez's attorneys. They didn't want to comment on pending litigation. Other news now today, Bent's Old Fort historic site is going to be back open after the Otero fire. It's 25% contained. The fire is it burned about 1600 acres. The fort and the trail between the fort and the parking area will be open. The rest of the trails around there are going to stay closed for now. The Fort Lyon fire burning in Bent County is 50% contained. It destroyed two homes earlier in the week. Evacuations are now lifted for the area uh, north of Woodland Park in Teller County. County and that fire up there. Deputies say it burned about seven acres and is 10% contained. Firefighters in Colorado Springs say that burn restrictions will kick in today at noon because of how dry it is, how windy it is, and how many fires they've seen. Teller County has had a burn ban in place for a week now. And one thing you want to know about the weather today, how about this stance? Well, we're going for a high of 66 degrees today. That's a little bit above the normal high of 61. The record high, 84 in 2002. Normal low is 33, and the record low, 18. And that is 100 years before the record high was set. Ed, thank you so much. Right now we are starting out good and quiet this morning as we look at the map across the metro. Uh, just looking at lots of green, no issues on I-25, 225 so far this morning. Smooth sailing on 6th Avenue, no issues on C-470 through Highlands Ranch. Erica, thank you. Today marks 75 years since Jackie Robinson took the field in his iconic number 42 jersey and became the first black man to play in Major League Baseball. Yes, breaking barriers. In his words, it made the national pastime truly national for the first time. NBC's Harry Smith talked to his son and all-star pitcher CeCe Sabathra to look at his legacy. For many an American, the sight of Jackie Robinson in a Major League uniform was horrifying. It meant the segregated world from which they drew so much comfort had been upended, violated. For Robinson, it was both an opportunity and a burden. He came out of poverty. His, his grandmother was a slave. His mother was a sharecropper and a domestic servant. He knew the horrors of the, the enslavement of our people and, and the discrimination and oppression. David Robinson is Jackie's son. Here's the two of them at the March in Washington in 1963. Fourth inning, no score, Brooklyn up, and Jackie Robinson pokes one into the left field stand. For Jackie Robinson, baseball was much, much more than a game. Baseball was even, for my father, a social development tool. His success was as a, a social change agent. As a black man, I find it quite discouraging to look around and find how little has been done to lift minorities from the depths of poverty and despair. In our home, he had a trophy room, and one wing or one wall of the trophy room was a glass uh, encased set up with trophies and, and memorabilia from baseball were all there. But the other three walls were all about uh, social involvement, plaques three deep on the walls in terms of uh, thanking him for, for service and commitment and determination. On the field, Robinson was Rookie of the Year, an All-Star, a Hall of Famer, Yet his stellar career did not exempt him from a fusillade of racial slurs, hate mail, and death threats. The St. Louis Cardinals threatened not to take the field when the Dodgers came to play. As I read his autobiography, he talks about how significant a toll it took on him psychologically. I don't think he would have done anything differently 
I don't think he could walk away from, from that challenge and that opportunity. For black Americans, Robinson was a godsend, a breaker of barriers, a symbol of triumph, of hope. There were certainly those who did not want us to succeed, but for every one of them, there are hundreds who are rooting for our success. For baseball players of this era, his are the shoulders they stand on. Tell me what it was like when you were playing to put the number 42 jersey on. This felt great to be able to, you know, represent Jackie. I wouldn't be able to have a chance to chase my dreams without him. So to be able to honor him and, and go out and play the game that he loved and I love, um, it was great. CeCe Sabathia was a dominating pitcher for 19 years in the majors, a six-time All-Star. Can you put your head in the mindset of what it must have been like for him to take the field? You know what? No, I can't. And that's why, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful to him. You know, this game is hard to play. And to be able to go out and play with the whole country watching you and, and the pressure of all these African-Americans, you know, on your back. Because if, he's, if he failed, then it may be another 10 years before we get another black player in, in MLB. In Robinson's treacherous and triumphant journey, always there at his side was wife Rachel. She turns 100 this summer. Their son says they were indeed a dynamic duo. He couldn't have done it solo, and a woman other than my mother, extremely intelligent, extremely sensitive, you know, couldn't have stood up to the pressure either. Um, they were both remarkable, remarkable people. And obviously it wasn't easy. I mean, Jackie Robinson faced physical, verbal abuse from fans, players, even on his own team throughout yeah. his entire career, and still he persisted. And uh, he's an incredible man. And, and tonight they're all wearing 42 on their jerseys yep. at Coors Field. It's going to be a great honor. He broke barriers. Boy, I, yeah. if you haven't seen that movie, 42, yes. you got to see it. It is so good. It, it is, is so, so good. good. Yeah, absolutely. Tells the story.